I'm sickened over the chilling revelations about Ravi Zacharias. Ravi lived a double life. He was a hypocrite, a liar, and worse. Unfortunately, many will be turned off to Christianity as a result. They don't necessarily have problems with Jesus. They have problems with many of his followers. Even worse, some Christians will begin to doubt whether Christianity is true because one of its most prominent advocates lacked integrity. In view of the surprising revelations about Ravi, there are three important points followers of Jesus should consider. Number one, Christianity is true because of the person of Jesus. There are numerous items reported about Jesus in the New Testament for which we can have confidence. For example, Jesus claimed to have a special relationship with God who had chosen him to usher in his kingdom. He performed deeds that earned him the reputation of being a miracle worker and exorcist. He taught using parables. At the instigation of the Jewish leadership of his day, Jesus was crucified by the Roman governor. These are just a few of the facts for which the supporting data is so strong that virtually every historian who studies Jesus grants them, including agnostic and atheist scholars. There's also significant evidence that Jesus claimed to be God's uniquely divine son and that he rose from the dead. If you're interested in taking a look at the evidence for these, I've included some links in the description of this video. Number two, the flaws of a messenger do nothing to undermine the truth of their message. A messenger's character flaws may hinder the receptivity of his or her message. However, they do not undermine the truth of the message. If Jesus rose from the dead, it's game, set, match. Christianity's true, period. Ravi Zacharias' serious moral failures have no relation to the evidence for Jesus, his resurrection, and his message any more than the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s marital affairs are related to his message on civil rights. People have public platforms because they have exceptional skills in a certain area such as athletics, the performing arts, politics, teaching, or leadership. Those skills, impressive as they may be, do nothing to make one a better person. Pastors and theologians usually have a more thorough understanding of the Bible than do those who sit in their pews. Yet, understanding the Bible does not in itself foster spiritual maturity. Understanding the Bible and living out what it says are entirely different matters. James wrote, Become doers of the word and not only hearers who deceive themselves. Very often we assume that a pastor or theologian is practicing what they're preaching. Experience informs us that our assumption is often mistaken. Our faith in Christ should be based on our relationship with Christ and because there's evidence supporting the truth of Christianity. Our faith should not be grounded in the word of a celebrity, even if he or she is a respected Christian. So if your faith is shaken when light is cast on the moral failures of a Christian leader you respected, it's a good time to ask yourself, why? Were you placing your faith in Jesus or that person? Number three, we are all flawed. This is not at all to excuse or lessen the magnitude of what Ravi did. We should require those who teach the Bible that they practice what they preach. God holds accountable to a higher standard those who teach the Bible. The letter of James also states, Do not become teachers in large numbers, my brothers, knowing that we who are teachers will receive stricter judgment. And Hebrews 13.4 reads, Marriage must be honored among all, and the marriage bed kept undefiled, for God will judge sexually immoral people and adulterers. So Ravi Zacharias will answer to God for his sexual misconduct and abuse. That said, we should keep in mind that all of us will be judged. The Apostle Paul wrote, All will appear before God's judgment seat, and each of us will give an account of himself to God. You may not be a celebrated proponent of Christianity like Ravi Zacharias was. However, if you claim to be a follower of Jesus and you're engaged in sexual immorality, you're going to answer to God as well, although you won't be judged as strictly. May this disappointing revelation pertaining to Ravi challenge all of us who follow Jesus to live a life in a manner worthy of the Lord, and may it serve as a sober warning to those of us who teach the Bible that we will be judged more strictly by the Lord. I want to praise the International Board of Directors of RZIM for having a thorough investigation conducted, 
for making public the results of that investigation without edits and for their contrite heart.